Hopkins, and welcome to HBS. It's a fantastic afternoon for me as I'm here with three fabulous students and we're going to have a little conversation about field, your experiences here on campus, your experiences and your immersions in Cape Town and elsewhere and Brazil. But first a little bit about the program for the folks at home, okay? How does that sound? So Great. field itself <laughs> is an acronym for Field Immersion Experiences for Leadership, <clears throat> better known as FIELD. And there are two field classes. There's Field Foundations, taught in the fall semester, and there's Field Global Immersion, or FGI, taught in the spring. And I've had the, really the fortunate opportunity to teach both of them. So a little bit about this, and just sort of conceptually, I think here at HBS what makes us so unique relative to other business schools is that the university leadership really decided to make this, this immersion experience, these hands-on, putting students in the protagonist role, to make this a priority within the HBS curriculum. Nobody else has anything quite like this. And one way, sort of shorthand way of thinking about it is that these are, if you will, soft skill classes. We have hard skills in finance and marketing. You guys know this, right? You case after case. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but this is not a case-based course. This is a course that's going to challenge you, and I suspect we're going to hear from our our, our three folks to my left here in a few minutes, we're going to challenge you in unique ways. And there's often sort of that sort of saying that goes, your hard skills are going to get you the job, and your soft skills are going to make you a leader. And I think that's really the ethos that underwrites a lot of this. So what exactly do these courses mean? Well, first of all, Field Foundations, which is taught in the fall, really has sort of three, if you will, building blocks to it. One is to develop self-awareness. One is to develop social awareness. And the third part is, is team effectiveness. In other words, how does one get to know oneself? How does one have a sense of what's going on around them with other individuals? And then how does one work with teams? And again, this is not, you're not going to achieve this by reading how some fantastic protagonist led somebody to a heroic victory at the SEC or whatever the case may be. <laughs> you're going to learn this by doing. And I think that's actually, and we're going to hear about it, it's one of the challenges both as being a student but also being as a faculty member. Faculty are intimately involved with these courses. We teach them. In, in fact, our role is similar in some ways to case-based courses and in other ways quite different. Um, we have to also be willing to lead from the front in what can be some difficult and challenging conversations as, as we explore how do we acquire these soft skills. So, when these students are involved in the interactive experiences, they're often done not in our usual case-based classes in Aldrich and, and elsewhere, but we take a little field trip about, oh, about a 30-second walk across campus to what are called the hives. Where we have movable classrooms and students can work in teams on experiential learning. We do simulations, and yes, we sometimes we come back to the case uh, rooms where we debrief on certain, on, on certain aspects of the course. And in many ways, this class is, is in some ways a setup. There's a narrative arc between field foundations in the fall and field global immersion in the spring. Because field global Im immersion in the spring has students actually take the skills that they've learned and put them to action. In other words, and, and in some ways, we put them to action, but we're going to, HBS being HBS, we're going to up our game a little bit. You're going to put them into action in a different context, a different international context, hence field global immersion. Our students, um, since this course began in 2012, MBA students have traveled to some 33 cities um, and have been involved in, in over a thousand different projects with global partner organizations. And so what exactly does this mean? What is field? Is it just sort of a holiday? You get to go to Cape Town and <laughs> San Paulo and not so much actually. I mean, I've, I've been the faculty member there and these guys work hard. Um, and the hard work comes in different kinds of ways, again, from case-based learning, right? The building blocks to this uh, course is a combination of how do we impart cultural intelligence and contextual intelligence? How do we have students understand a new place? Why is it that customers and people locally are going to make different decisions than in Boston? And it seems rather obvious, but it's actually something that's difficult to impart. And along with that is, is, is how do we deal with teams, once again, team effectiveness. Because what happens is we d divide all groups. So for example, I'm taking a group to Kenya this year. There'll be 84 that will be divided into teams of six and they'll be paired with a global partner. And then sort of the, if you will, the glue that binds all of these objectives together, cultural intelligence, contextual intelligence, and, and, and team effectiveness, is a human design centered project. And with each global partner, we will identify a project, and these teams of six will work with this global partner to develop what is a B2C solution using human design-centered thinking. So 
I've talked a lot <laughs> already, but hopefully it kind of lays the groundwork, and I'm sure some of you guys are like, oh, right, that's what we were doing all right. <laughs> um, now we remember. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember. But um, it really, there's nothing that gives me greater pleasure than to be able to spend some time with students that I had um, formerly, and I had all of you last year, and it really is, I think, one of the amazing things about HBS from a faculty member's perspective, is to be able to work in these field classes on, frankly, in some ways, a much different kind of level. I feel as though when I teach these courses versus case space, particularly when you go, it's like real world HBS. I take mm -hmm. students to Cape Town and now Nairobi. Mm -hmm. You really get an opportunity to know students um, beyond just the classroom environment. And I think in that sense, and I'm hoping that's something a little bit that we can also talk about. What is it about this program, both from a pedagogical standpoint, from a personal standpoint, but also from faculty-student relationship standpoint? In terms of really having that kind of mentorship on the one hand, and on the other hand, for a sort of, you know, an old fogey like me, where I get to sort of really see the world through your eyes. So, um, why don't I turn to my left? Casey, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself to the crowd at home, and yes. tell us um, about where you're from and what you've been up to here. Yes. So, my name is Casey. I am from New York and now a second year at HBS, what we call an EC, because this is our elective curriculum year. Um, I was in consulting before coming to HBS, and since being here, I've been a really active member of Section B. I'm a member of the Retail and Luxury Goods Club, and I'm exploring different interests. It's the greatest part about being here. Excellent. Dennis. Uh, I'm Dennis. Uh, I grew up in Singapore, and I spent uh, my probably eight years before uh, business school in New York. Uh, and I did uh, technology investing back in New York. Uh, here, I do a bunch of things. I'm involved in the tech club and the investment club. Um, I'm doing an independent project, which you can do at HBS uh, on subscription businesses, which is really cool. Uh, and we'll talk about this later, but I went to Brazil, uh, spent some time in Sao Paulo for my project and also traveled through the Amazon, which was an awesome time too. That sounds pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kristen. Um, I'm originally from New Jersey, but prior to HBS, I lived in almost every corner of the U.S. as part of the U.S. military. I was a captain in the Army flying Black Hawk helicopters uh, just prior to school. Uh, for my global immersion assignment, I went to Bangkok, Thailand, which was an awesome experience. Here at school, I'm one of the co-presidents of the Armed Forces Alumni Association, also involved in the Technology Club, and really having a great time exploring the different options here at HBS. One of my favorite things about uh, this second year of the uh, elective curriculum is I'm cross-registered at both the Kennedy School and MIT, which I think is just another uh, little tidbit about how, how global of an experience we get to have here at HBS. Fantastic, guys. Well, why don't we start a little bit with um, sort of the fall term. We can break it up for these guys because there really are two classes, but they're complementary. Um, and, and a lot of the skill sets we're trying to impart are complementary to each other. But if you think back, sort of dust off the memory <laughs> to RC, which is the required curriculum year, your first year here, in what ways did you find Field Foundations um, and the courses uh, with Field Foundations complementing the case method courses that you had? I can get us started. Sure. So if I think about my biggest learning moments in case method discussions and in field, it was whenever I was put on the spot or put in a position that put a little bit of pressure on me and helped me understand what are my instinctive thoughts, what are my instinctive behaviors. Um, and in a case method discussion, that tends to be how do I break down a problem really quickly? What is the first mm -hmm. thing that I notice? But mm -hmm. in field, it was what do I do when I'm nervous, when I'm under pressure? Mm -hmm. How does that come up off to other people? Mm -hmm. um, I remember doing simulations of negotiations, of like crisis management type mm -hmm. of things with Everest, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Um, well, let's pause on okay. that. Everest, so <laughs> Everest is, <coughs> there's a simulation where you're with a team, right, all of you? And mm -hmm. Everest, um, where you have to try to get to the top yep. with your team, and you're each, each member of the Everest team is given a certain amount of information. And as a faculty member, I can always predict this like clockwork. Like <laughs> one of you guys are going to sort of make it to the top, and the yeah. rest is mm -hmm. not so good. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's also videotaped. Yes. And yeah. you get to see yourself. Yeah, yes. I, I think that, that really draws light on one of the biggest differences between the case method and the field experience is the case method, you read a case, you discuss the case, and then you close the case, it's over, you leave and do something different, or go on to the next case. But in field foundations, almost all of our experiences are an experience and then we always debrief and reflect on it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I think there were two if not three different exercises mm -hmm. that were filmed. So you go through this experience, you see how you react, and then you're forced to actually watch yourself on film afterwards and see 
how the rest of the world sees you and, and really reflect on your actions in more than just an immediate way. And others watch it with you yeah. and yeah. say, like, remember when you did that? This yeah. is how that made me feel. This is how it seemed. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's really powerful. Yep. It's also one of the first chances we got to really work as a team. Mm -hmm. right? If you think about the first RC curriculum, you do a lot of uh, fin finance and marketing and stuff like that in class. But you never really are put in a group of six and say, hey, you know, let these various backgrounds and various personalities mix and mm -hmm. what comes out the other end, right? So yeah, I thought well, that was the most Let's talk about that a little part. bit. What's the good, <laughs> yeah. the bad, the ugly of being yeah. able, because these are really, I think one of the things that are, from, from a teaching perspective, both exhilarating and also where one has to really, as a faculty member, be attuned right. to 90 plus students in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Because on the one hand, you want, you know that there's going to be failure and on the other hand, you want to impart the skills for students to be able to pick themselves up individually and as teams, but also to give guidance in those debriefs. So the good, the bad, the ugly about Everest and being filmed in this kind of stuff. What, what were your takeaways from that? Because I think that that's one of a crucial, it can give us by way of example, a crucial difference and also some of the things that you learned. And we'll sort of pause on that and later on talk about FGI and see sort of mm -hmm. where you came from there. Well, let me, let me start. So uh, first of all, caveat. Uh, Carrie here was our field professor, so uh, <laughs> I have to say what I'm going to say. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I, I paid him a lot of yeah, money. <laughs> exactly. No, I think I think field did a tremendous job at preparing us uh, uh, to build long-term relationships with the people that we were meeting at, at HBS, right? Mm -hmm. And I think uh, you know we had this thing in, in the first uh, semester where we kind of laid out all the different flags of uh, the various countries that mm -hmm. uh, our classmates, our section mates, were from. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, the field is kind of there to say, look, look at that. Like, th this is the level of diversity you have in this classroom. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to spend so much time with these 90 people. You're, you know, getting the right answer is, is important, but that's not the most important, right? It's mm -hmm. about how you guys, over time, trust each other, build this family and, and all that. And I thought, like, Everest was the step one of that, right? Mm -hmm. Where you still have a few people. Right? It's, you're, you're comparing between selfish goals and team goals, mm -hmm. and some people want to get to the top of the mountain. Uh, but then as you keep doing these exercises, you realize, is maybe is that really the most important thing or, mm -hmm. or is there something else more mm -hmm. important? Mm -hmm. I, I think yeah. what surprised me the most is is the dialogue that stemmed out of the Everest exercise. There was the exercise itself and then the formal debrief. But in, in my group, at least, there were three or four conversations with different members of the team that spawned off of, of that experience in regards to relationship building, in regards to leadership, actual feedback that was solicited from different team members two different team members and there were tears and emotions that I have never seen in mm -hmm. a classroom environment before that that stemmed out of that exercise that was really surprising but in, in a awesome developmental way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. sure. it's Casey. I think I totally agree with that and I think <laughs> one of the hardest things was that happened right at the beginning of school yeah so we <laughs> were basically all strangers as we were yeah. going through these really emotional exercises and being critiqued and criti critiquing ourselves publicly and I think it was a really interesting, the beginning of what has been a two-year lesson and will be a lifelong lesson of how do you get input about others and see them in tough situations and, and learn about them, but also allow them to progress and change and grow mm -hmm. and, and balance sort of that first impression with the, the two-year down the road or the however many year down the road impression. I think that's something that has really stuck with me, just the lesson that you might see some really, really, really strong actions and hear some strong words from people yeah. um, that may or may not be indicative of where they are at mm -hmm. the end of their HBS experience. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. yeah, I think it's interesting for me to hear all this from you guys because I have the perspective of sort of the bird's eye perspective, yeah. you know, you sort of <laughs> see it all playing out. But I think that, you know, look, I, I do, and, and, I, and then we'll move on to FGI, but to what degree do you feel, feel foundations, and, and it's a good segue, I think, into FGI really sort of explodes some of the myth about whether it's HBS or if you will, typical business school, right? Mm -hmm. That it's hard charging, cutthroat, this, as opposed to, and I obviously teach this course, but my goal and observation for which students go on this kind of journey over, mm -hmm. the, over the course of the RC and frankly over the course of two years of really embracing this notion, first of all, that your section is your squad. Mm -hmm. Look to your left, look to your right, you've got everybody's back. And building on that ethos, right? But then you get to Everest and suddenly it's like, <laughs> oh, maybe not so much. Yeah. But it's this incremental experience, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Two steps forward, one step back. But 
to what degree does foundations lend itself to, a, to, to, to building those kinds of teams and that sense, not just of camaraderie here, but also of how to lead when you get out of here? Mm. Do you feel that, it's, that it helps to accomplish some of that? Yeah, I, I think the fact that it's not always the same group of six people that you that you are organized with in the different field foundations experiences. I mean, there was the Everest exercise we keep referring to, but we had an experience that we had to build a the tallest tower possible yeah. with marshmallows yeah. and spaghetti. Identity I mapping. think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah the identity map, mapping. So we sit at yeah. small tables with different groups. So there was a philosophy that someone told me when I was a first year that was a second year at the time that said every time she met someone in her section, just immediately we, we tend to make judgments. That's just human nature about people. And you know, she was the same. She would always put somebody into a box, but then she would have an experience with them at a round table or at the Everest exercise or a conversation that spawned from something that happened in class. And without fail, they would jump out of that box. She could not put mm -hmm. people in this little box that, you know, these snap fire judgments that we tend to make about people. And I think these experiences in these different types of small teams and then the reflection that we're forced to have afterwards mm -hmm. really prevents that from happening. And I, I think to your point of leading on the backside, I think it really forced me anyways, when I go out into the business world, I'll meet someone, make a snap fire judgment that is natural in human nature, but really to you know step back, reflect and say, okay, why did they do that? Or what else is there to this individual that maybe just needs some drawing out? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the, you know, and I think it's on that point that faculty get this very interesting because they, everyone keeps referring to reflections. I, you know, <laughs> I joke sort of reflect, reflect, yeah. reflect. After you're done with these exercises, it's not just that we debrief in class, but you actually have to do written reflections, right? And mm -hmm. with the idea, and it's a very strong pedagogical philosophy at HBS that reflection is crucial to us internalizing some of the concepts that we're teaching. And from, to your point, Kristen, from a faculty member standpoint, the reflections are extraordinary. <laughs> I read 90 of them every week, and you learn about individuals who could be pigeonholed as the banker woman, or the military guy, or the marketing person, or the, and those just are completely within a week gone. <laughs> yeah. And the journeys that people have taken, the struggles that they have, the ways in which they're looking to sort of be the leader they want to be, but can't quite get there quite yet. And I think it's one of the magics of HBS, that we're all sort of in on this together. and. With that in mind, being in on it together, so we're in Boston, Field Foundations, and then suddenly we're gonna up our game. <laughs> and we're gonna go to Cape Town, we're gonna go to Sao Paulo, we're gonna go off to the Far East. Um, you know, and what was, can you talk a little bit about this transition to, you know, between the two courses, what was, you know, what made Field Global Immersion different than Field Foundations might be in a good way for us to start into this? What do you think, Dennis? Start yeah, us off. Yeah, I can start <laughs> us off. Uh, well, for one, you get a team, right? Right, and now you have to work with so this team. So explain the for, team. What's the team? Yeah, so uh, you get placed. You don't really get to pick. You get placed in a team uh, of six people, all from different sections. So, so this is totally new. Totally it mixes new. Mixes it all up. You yeah. pick your location. Different. Right. You do pick your location. So you pick your location. You might not get your first choice. Uh, but I got my first choice. <laughs> and, and then once you have that location, they kind of put that team together. And my guess, and you correct me if I'm wrong, is that this team is put together with intention, not like a <laughs> random... There's a, there's a very code. complex algorithm. Right, yeah. there's right. a complex algorithm Actually, in, we just in everything in HBS. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that could have been it too. But yeah, I don't complex, think algorithm. Com complex <laughs> algorithm, we'll stick with that. Uh, and this, this team becomes your, your squad for the next yeah. uh, four or five months, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it's, it's great, you need to start thinking about things in a very different way. It's like, okay, well, there's no point putting on a front because that front quickly goes away, mm -hmm. right, yep. when you spend that much time with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to kind of figure out uh, who's going to lead or is this going to be a rotational leadership. There's a lot of the, the lessons that you learn in a first semester, are not only in field but in lead and other classes that you're immediately applying week yep. one of, of, of FGI. And Give then, us an example yeah. from like lead and tell, team, tell team these guys what lead is. What is yeah. lead? You want to take that? I'm happy to. You could go, yeah, I feel like you, you yeah, love the so team launch the, stuff. The, the, <laughs> big thing, the big thing that we did. Oh, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Well, uh, well, I'll start that. So, so being, being in positions always of formal authority in the military was a very different experience for me to right. be 
in a team of six that no one is the formal authority figure and you have to really figure out how you're going to work in in a team and i think one of the did we learn it in field or lead the team launch that was scenario? that was field oh, that was field that was me no. we talked about it in both yeah, we, we talked about, about it that's fair we'll split up that's we're fair. not competitive here yeah that's, <laughs> fair. that's fair. but there's a scenario or there's there's a philosophy called team launch and yes, when you get exactly. together with a team what you have to do lay everything out on the table what are your priorities what are you trying to get out of this? What what something we talked about is what does your ideal day look like? Right. And that really draws out what people's priorities are. I'm an early riser. I like to stay up late. Right. And really launching the team from the very beginning and laying kind of all of the must-haves and definitely don't do's on the table for mm -hmm. our team at least that went to Bangkok um, really early on prevented a lot of conflicts that could have arisen later because we all knew where each other stood from day one. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. What do you think, Casey? I think, I mean, that's totally agree with everything. The The team aspect just becomes much more real mm -hmm. when you are working together on a trip, sort of like on location. It's It feels like it's 24-7, and that is completely different than Field Foundations. But also, you have a global partner. You have a client yeah. that you're working mm -hmm. for. Yeah, tell me about that. Who's your global partner in Cape Town? So we had an awesome global partner in Cape Town called the Training Room Online, TTRO. Mm -hmm. And they are a nonprofit that's seeking to change the game in education by way of technology. Mm -hmm. So we did a project for them that was all focused around how do we get parents to engage with their child's education. And that is complicated by so many factors um, universally, but also specific to Cape Town and to mm -hmm. South Africa. And then a factor that's in a way almost introduced by TTRO in that as you digitize education more, are you making parents feel ostracized? Or do you make them feel like they can't mm -hmm. actually help and support in the way that they might have in a, a few generations ago? So we were helping them tackle all of those problems and we worked on it for months from Boston. So we were navigating, mm -hmm. as you guys know, you're we navigating time differences and trying to get to know each other, get to know the client, but without being in the same place. Yep. And then getting on the ground and knowing we have very limited time here, we have to, like you would always say, squeeze every second out of every moment while we're there. Because um, I did make you hike up Table Mountain. Yes, <laughs> first thing in the morning, first thing before in the morning, going, going straight up. to the client. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, yes. That's which was fun. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that we did, really. Yeah, yeah. I, Twice. We twice. Uh -huh. We went up Table Mountain twice, and Lion said, look, mm -hmm. really, I mean, I think the, the idea of field global immersion is also, once you've done the heavy lifting here, you're there for 10 days. Mm -hmm. And my view is the bar of excellence is up here, yep. and we are going to squeeze every ounce of being where we are in that location, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you are not going to get that time back. And I never want a student to come back and say, I could have been in Dallas, mm -hmm. or I right. could have been mm -hmm. in, right. and so, yep. yeah, this poor group had to suffer with going up yeah. to Table Mountain. It's part of that year. Yeah. It's part right. of that year. It was part of that year. In Bangkok, I woke, to, I woke up first thing in the morning and, and got on a water taxi that was right outside our hotel and went to a couple temples in the morning and watched the sunrise over the temples in Bangkok, and then got back on the water taxi, went to the hotel, showered, and, and met my FGI group uh, and then met our client earlier or later on in the afternoon. I mean, you don't get that in Dallas or Boston. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. And I think that the the ethos of really, and this gets back to sort of the building blocks, right? There's the team effectiveness part, which is is what you so so eloquently described with the with the with the team launch. And the cultural and contextual intelligence, totally. right? Which are the glue binding it together is this human-centered design experience. Um, but that cultural and contextual is, is hugely important. And But getting to the team part, mm -hmm. the look, I, I mean, I do joke sometimes. It's like real world HBS. I mean, we, we prepare you as much as we can. We do. But surely there were some things that you weren't prepared for. Mm -hmm. and until you're literally, and this gets back to why being literally in the protagonist position versus reading about it makes all the difference in learning. So tell us, give us some examples of anything that comes to mind that you just, you learned because you did. You're learning by doing. So I think we focused a lot during the train up to FGI about the methodology itself. And we talked a lot about design thinking and exactly how are you gonna execute that. And my client for our project was a mall group called Cyan Piwat in, in Bangkok, like I said. And they had three different malls that was basically one conglomerate. They had a new mall called Siam Discovery on one side of their conglomerate. And they wanted to figure out why traffic wasn't moving from one side of their mall, which was Siam, Siam Piwat, like the, the touristy side, over to their new feature of Siam Discovery. Mm -hmm. 
And we were able to go through the process as we were trying to do interviews while we were on the mm -hmm. ground. And we, we walked through the Peru here in Boston to look at traffic flow in malls in the US. And what we discovered through the process is that the client, once we did our final presentation, was looking for lots of ideas. They didn't so much care about the process we went through while we were doing it, which is the, the mm -hmm. you know, learning aspect of it for us. But when we did our final presentation to the client, we, they, they just wanted tons and tons of ideas and, and where we came up with these ideas mm -hmm. from just our life experiences. And I, I think that that was a, a big surprise in, in drawing out from the client over the course of the project what they are looking for, mm -hmm. not what you think they're looking for. Mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll tackle that question from the, the team aspect and mm -hmm. you know, what went not as, I would say, not as smoothly as I would like. Sure. Uh, I think everyone has very different expectation mm -hmm. uh, of what, A, they're supposed to deliver and be how much work they want to put in. Because when you're there for 24-7, like, mm -hmm. like what Cassie said, um, you, could, you could be doing a lot. Right, you could be effectively doing a year's work in three weeks, or you could do uh, three weeks' work in three weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, the difference in expectation uh, had to be really be, be kind of calibrated over time. So there was an iterative team launch process that had to con con constantly keep going on, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, it, for me at least, my team was a difficult part. Uh, the other piece is, you know, not really knowing, like like uh, like Kristen mentioned, like what exactly we're supposed to deliver, right? Mm -hmm. And that that process, when there's a language barrier, gets kind of challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, and they, they want to accomplish as much as possible from a group of HBS students, uh, but we also mm -hmm. can't have too right. much of a scope creep, you know. And let me ask you guys, really could we have a ch could we have created that kind of aha uh -huh learning experience through the case method on campus, or was it unique to this FGI? I mean, personally, I think it's impossible. Right? Yeah, it's like, impossible. It's, it's a lot of theory we do here. We, it's, it's great stuff we do in the classroom where we examine you know, numbers and words, <laughs> how this protagonist <laughs> but, did, mm -hmm. uh, but there's no iterative learning process, right? right. Like, it's like the case, bam, done. You know? <laughs> right. yeah. And yeah. if you only do that, you start to think that every problem can be answered from right. within the classroom or within totally. the office while you're seated at your desk and talking to the people that mm -hmm. you already know. And so I think, for me, the moments that stand out were just sitting with parents and, and trying to ask questions and steer the conversation in the way that I thought was really important and mm -hmm. finally just having to let them tell me what was on their mind and realizing we didn't even think to ask mm -hmm. those questions totally. and that's what they actually care about. That's what needs to be in our final product. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't do that from inside a classroom right. much as we practice it. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's well, sort of on that, on that line, you know, if we're imagining five years from now, 10 years, we're looking back on some of this, and you think about the uniqueness of, of field, field mm -hmm. foundations in the fall, field global immersion in the spring. Um, what do you imagine some of the things that you experienced, that you learned, that you mm -hmm. struggled with, whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, will be the most impactful for you? So I, I actually was talking about this to my roommates who are also uh, two people from my section from RC year. And um, one of the most tangible things that all three of us talked about from the field experience is the theory of design thinking, which is basically starting with a blank canvas and spit firing ideas. Mm -hmm. And we, we learned about how to do it in many different ways. One involves post-it notes uh, across a blackboard or a whiteboard or a window. And all three of us used design thinking methodology or actually did a design thinking exercise in our summer internships between RC and EC year. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I would have never really thought of doing mm -hmm. before and really was helpful not only on our project but in my immediacy of my internship and something that I'll use again in my career as I'm trying to tackle tough problems mm -hmm. with no real tangible solution. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, my takeaway was probably more from the first half of field, mm -hmm. um, team launch being one. Uh, right. I think, you know, I personally thought it was silly. Right. You know, when it first started, you read about it, you're like, you know, this seems kind of tacky, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and you don't practice it, so you don't really understand how valuable it is. Mm -hmm. But then through field and FGI, you mm -hmm. actually use it. And then you realize, oh my gosh, this is cheesy, but it works, mm -hmm. you know, and it really, really works. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you know, if you ask me five years out, like if I, when I have my own team to manage, will I do that? Mm -hmm. For sure. Will they laugh at it when I first do it? For sure. <laughs> and will they regret laughing? Yeah, for sure. So that, that, that's how I think about that's it. Really good. Yeah. 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 How about you, Casey? Um, it's related, but I think for me, <laughs> 
there's so much talk these days about the power of a vulnerable leader yeah. and how putting yourself out there creates all these inc intense bonds among teams and how great that is. And I think it's very easy to hear that and say, I agree, sounds great. I would do that in a leadership situation. But then putting yourself in those situations where there's a time pressure or some sort of other pressure and seeing just how incredibly powerful that is mm -hmm. for creating rapport in a really, really short amount of time when you really need to get something done. I think that's it's just what I always think about. And it's a soft skill. It's what I always think about when I think about field. And it's a soft skill that I, I know that I'm going to just continually check myself mm -hmm. yeah. every year for the rest of my life and the rest of my career, certainly. like. Am I being vulnerable? What could we, how, how could I make this team better by mm -hmm. doing my part to yeah, bring myself to Yeah, it's almost like counterintuitive, right? Yeah. We've been taught so long to, I don't, you know, I don't want to speak for the three of you, but certainly I can, I can speak for my own self and, and students who come to see me. And, I, and I get, it's wonderful. I get a lot of students in my office. And, and you know, the sense that we have to be sort of type A and, and just have all the answers mm -hmm. and, you know, sort of have this mask on. And so what you're saying is that we're busy now teaching you. Actually, no, that's not how you do it, right? Mm -hmm. um, that there's a certain, maybe at some points, yeah. but there's a certain other points where you have to lead from the front in so far as, as, as displaying that you're human, yeah. right? And I think the, so my question to you, sort of building off of that and, and sort of just the core concept of, of, of field, you know, as being about leadership development and HBS, one of, you know, part of our mission and kind of getting back to kind of that, that hokey thing, so to speak, <laughs> but I yeah. really believe in this, that we are here to create future global leaders. And as you're sort of saying to me, you can't do this just by case method. And I don't want to sort of, case method is hugely important to what we do. But again, if we, sort of building off of your point on the soft skill side, wh what do you imagine both now and in the future are sort of next step in the career, but when we think about 10, 15 years, where really you're in that realm of entering sort of global leaders. Takeaways from this, things you should be thinking about. You know, obviously team launch is important <laughs> and brainstorming, but sort of a little bit more on the philosophical level of things that you never anticipated being important to being a great leader. I mean, I think really understanding people. Uh, mm -hmm. on, on my team, I had a former consultant, a former brand manager, a former finance guy, uh, and someone that came from government, and, and a finance girl. Um, and so bringing that diverse group of people together, and again, just judging them mm -hmm. for the surface level, what they bring to the table, is the wrong answer. I mean, really digging into the, the deepness of why they're here or what they bring or what they desire and really using all of that to gel a bunch of different people to meet one common goal, mm -hmm. I think. Okay. Yeah, and um, I, I think also that leadership is not just being the CEO, mm. you know, having your name on the front do door, <laughs> right? Being the person that stands up when you need a representative. I think, I think leadership is a lot more than that. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, finding where you add the value in the team and. Uh, it, it evolves through time too. So I think you know we learned that through FGI. At least I learned that through FGI, where the ne that there necessarily wasn't a leader, but there was always some some level of value add from everyone in the team, and that mm -hmm. kind of rotated. So I, th I think HBS does a really good job at doing that. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's also a great reminder, especially being in another city um, and in another country. There's this really compelling reminder that you can't be a good leader if you're not taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I was. Such a, I was a, such a better teammate and a better consultant, for lack of a better word, when I did wake up a little bit earlier to hike Table Mountain, right. maybe started working 30 minutes later, but then I could really focus because I felt like what I needed for myself was taken care of mm -hmm. and learning how to balance my needs and being a good teammate is critical and always will be. Mm -hmm. And I think getting to practice that in, a, in the section context, in the mm -hmm. HBS context was really special. Fantastic. I think that's a really, yeah, yeah. That's a really good point. Really great point. And so we've got just a couple more minutes left. Um, and a, a couple words or less. What would you want prospective students to know about Field found Foundations and FGI? Yeah, I, I mean, we, we covered a lot of it. You can, something that I really think HBS does well, and specifically with the Field Foundations and Field Curriculum, is learning by doing. I mean, the, the reason why you go get an MBA is because you're learning things here that mm -hmm. you can't just pick up a book and learn. And I know in the EC year, it's something that I really tried to optimize for in my classes and my course selection is what can I do on a course online versus what 
do I have to be here at HBS mm -hmm. to do? And I think field is one of those things that you can't just watch a movie and figure it out. You actually have to be there, do it, experience, mm -hmm. reflect upon it, and <laughs> and, and learn from yeah. it by, by being there. Yep. Yeah. Can uh, I jump yeah, in? Because mine's in. gonna build on yours. Yeah. I also think from the other side, these aren't experiences you can have just by traveling either. Mm, it, totally. It's more than yeah. just going to another place. It's more than just having the classroom component. It's more than just mm. having the, the team building part. I think the fact that HBS comes at it from every mm. single mm -hmm. angle, and then you throw in like the HBS connections to these amazing companies and nonprofits mm -hmm. so we can help support. I just, I don't know where else I would have been able to recreate those experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, take team on seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there you go. It, 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 <laughs> iterate on it. Iterate on it. Uh, you take nothing yeah. away from these forty minutes. Team launch. Team <laughs> launch. It's real. I laughed at it too, but it's real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's the other thing with this. Is look, I think from the faculty's perspective, you know, I've taught a lot of stuff across the university, and you know, over two decades, and. It is in some ways one of the most challenging courses to teach and my absolute favorite courses to teach. And I think for many reasons, not the least of which is what you see here, you really get to know the students. And I think from a faculty member's perspective, and I ho also hope from a student's perspective, it, it, it's, it's again one of the magics of HBS, that you have this opportunity. Like I have an opportunity to sort of hike up the mountain with you <laughs> and then say, all right, what are we going to, you know, mm -hmm. give me the rundown on what you're doing with your global partner. Um, you know, being able to, sort of laugh with you guys about how nobody did so great on Everest, but actually <laughs> then get a really good sense of where your heads are at when I read these reflections. Um, and I think in that sense, um, it's both serious, you get a lot out of it, um, it's completely unique, but it's also a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And so I think in that sense, um, it sounds like, I know you and I were in Cape Town <laughs> together, but it yeah. sounds like uh, Brazil and, and, and Thailand were equally as amazing, yes? Mm -hmm. We had a better time than you. I, so, I not true. <laughs> so not true, so not true. We are not competitive people, but Cape Town rocked. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, fist bump on that one. Thank you very much. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah, Thailand, let's hear from I you. I don't know how much time we have left, but I, I think what's super interesting as, as we're back here together in this forum, because we were in the same section, we weren't, um, but you guys were together in, in Cape Town. And what I think was really interesting and profound to me about the field experience is I had my field team that was there working on the same project as me, but I also had my Section D team that was working on other projects, but also in Bangkok, and there was about 10 of us. And that bond that we had because we were all from Section D mm -hmm. in Bangkok was something that I didn't realize was even there until we were together in a foreign country. And I think that's kind of part of the power of the HBS network that it almost took us traveling across the world to realize. I thought mm -hmm. that was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you don't get to choose, yeah. right? I mean, you, you, you're, you're, I mean, you get to choose your location. You can try to kind of game it a little bit with some mm -hmm. of your friends, but it off, we always tell people, don't do that because it never works very well. <laughs> yeah. and, and a lot of people will say, I signed up and I only got, you know, one of my best buddies. And so sometimes you're in there with section mates that you obviously have already bonded with, but you might not know as well. Totally. And then you also, and you know, I think the thing to bear in mind, and, and, and you guys know this all so well now, but, but Feel global immersion when you're sort of mixed up other than the 10 people you already knew from your section mm -hmm. is a nice transition to EC year when you're no longer with that section. Did you find it that way, that it sort of was a, a, a nice way to bridge over and suddenly you're no longer with I hate to say, but Section D is pretty awful. <laughs> Not because of my section, but you know, you're in second. I will save my comments about Section B for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> incredible. Wait until Facebook Live is over. <laughs> but we are the best section. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> I was kind of hoping we cut when she said Section D was awesome. So. Okay. All the important things. All right, yeah. everybody. Yeah. I think we're all finished up. It's time. Cool. Um, but we should thank the crew. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And, um, this was fun. Yeah, yeah it's been great. great. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Yeah. So, um, and we're going to give it the due amount of time just <laughs> in case right, we're right. sort of still alive. But it makes me want to do it all over again, guys. Yeah, sure. let's do it. That's our next topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christine has to catch a flight. So.